Can anyone hear me? Check one, two. Check one, two. Okay, you can hear me, but you can't. You can't see me. Got an echo right here. Looking in. Uh, okay, here we go. My name is William Pearson. I am not a security expert, but I am a Linux systems engineer, and I've been using open source security software for about a decade now. Um, I want to share some of those tools with you today uh, and tell you a little bit about myself um, and about where I'm coming from. Um, I uh, was raised a Southern Baptist uh, conservative Republican and uh, it took me a while to um, uh, come out of my uh, slumber uh, intellectually and, uh, and when I started to see that there was a lack of reason in um, in that uh, that ethic, that paradigm, um, I started to make my own decisions, and I've come to a point where I, I now uh, uh, believe that violence isn't an answer to, to solving the problems. Um, I served in the Marine Corps, and uh, I um, believe in liberty, um, and uh, now I, I feel like I'm coming from a, a place that's more um, principled in my beliefs. Um, one of the issues that's really passionate about besides security, if I can uh, just take about uh, two minutes to talk about it, uh, my friend Su Suzanne McHenry was uh, deported two years ago, or a year and a half ago, um, over some uh, paperwork issues with ICE. She was first wrongly accused, falsely accused of child abuse, um, and then uh, when the prosecutors uh, case fell apart, uh, he called Immigration Customs Enforcement and she was deported, separated from her three children. Um, and so I just want to dedicate uh, my time here to uh, Suzanne and her family. Um, she's on uh, Facebook and she has a support group on Facebook. Her name is Suzanne McHenry. Okay, um, I'll get, without further uh, delay, I'll get started with my presentation. Um, let me bring it up here on my desktop and I will... Uh, get started. If you can't hear me, if you need me to speak up, if you have any questions, please post them to the chat. Um, you can also, I'll check my Twitter at the end of my talk and, um, and uh, answer any questions you Twitter to me. Uh, I've already uh, posted the link to the presentation in the chat room. That'll take you to Google Documents. Um, and uh, here we go. Let's see. Looks like this didn't import too well. I'll see if I can get this restarted. Um, and I apologize. Okay, um, the first thing I, I want everybody to be aware of, and you're probably already aware of, especially if you if come if you come from a IT background, this might be um, uh, old hat for you. Uh, Please bear with me. Um, I'm sure uh, a lot of people listening today have some things to add to this session, so please join in the chat. Um, first of all, with your passwords, you want to be choosing strong, long, unique um, passwords. Uh, strong meaning uh, you have a mix of case, uh, you have uh, punctuation in there, special characters. Uh, Long meaning uh, it needs to be you know 12 to 20 characters long. Um, brute force attacks uh, usually start with you know a three or eight character password. So um, the longer your password is, the longer it would take for someone to do a brute force track that uh, attack on your password. That is trying every possible key combination one at a time. Um, the second thing. Uh, 
uh, or third, uh, unique passwords. Those passwords uh, uh, shouldn't be the same on every site. Uh, I made this mistake in the past. Um, I uh, used the same or a similar password for some web forums and uh, then Gawker got uh, cracked and um, and my password uh, was exposed or a variation of my default password is exposed. So now I use um, Password Hasher for uh, Fire, uh, Firefox. It's an extension that runs on the browser. I have um, uh, short, unique catchphrases for every web website that I go to and then um, from that a, pa a long password is hashed from that. Uh, I'm not going to go a whole lot into about how it works but um, you'll be able to see once you've uh, installed that extension for Firefox. Um, it really is a, a, a good way to get, uh, get some unique strong passwords that uh, are memorable. I'm uh, toggling back and forth here on my screen to make sure I'm just very choppy advanced I got a request for some advanced topics like I said I'm not a security expert I'm a software analyst and systems engineer so uh, if you're looking for advanced security topics um, I really uh, uh, suggest you um, uh, bear with me during this elementary chat Um, don't don't uh, have your software remember your password. Um, if you have a basic password to enter your system and then you have complex passwords but your system remembers every single one of them, well then someone only has to guess one password. Uh, also, you need to be password protecting your smartphones. Um, it, you should, uh, most, pass, most uh, phones have a code that you can enter um, and th then then once these devices are password protected, don't d reveal your password to anyone, even out of convenience. Create them a share for the folder that they need um, that's associated with their own login. Um, don't never give anyone your login, uh, especially not um, government uh, without a court order. Uh, you know if 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 law enforcement or um, some other authorities need access to your system then they should pursue the proper channels to get that authorization from you. Um, you don't have to voluntarily give that information over. I talked a little bit about encryption. Um, for your uh, for your laptop, computer, your portable devices you need to be using either a directory encryption or whole disk encryption. There's a uh, open source program called TrueCrypt that will uh, encrypt your thumb drives. It also encrypts Windows passwords. And the benefit to using TrueCrypt is you can actually create hidden encrypted volumes within uh, TrueCrypt uh, for plausible deniability. That is, you use one password to get into your actual share and a completely different password to get into your hidden share. That way if you're forced to reveal your password you can only reveal one of those passwords. Um, for your email, uh, a lot of people still use emails if though, though we're private, but it has never been a private form of communication. It's meant for convenience only. Um, if you want to send private email, uh, you need to be using a combination of uh, the Thunderbird email client, uh, the Enigmail extension, and GNU Privacy Guard. That's GPG. That's an open source implement implementation of PGP, uh, which is public key encryption. Uh, both person sending and receiving the email need to be running the software in order for um, you be you to be able to properly encrypt and decrypt the information. Um, this is the only way you're going to get secure communication through email and uh, um, uh, 
uh, especially when you're running a shared host or on a free service like uh, uh, Gmail, your your email is constantly be being spidered and look for looking for keywords. Now, I'm not saying that Google wants to do anything malicious with this, but if they're forced to turn over that information to law enforcement, could be in trouble. Um, I've uh, read uh, some bad things about Skype encryption lately. Um, talking now about uh, video chat. Um, a lot of people use Skype uh, as their telephone service and, and, and thinking that it's encrypted, and it is somewhat, but this encryption is really easy to break. The uh, GNU Free Call is, uh, is an alternative service that's coming, but it's not out yet. Um, so uh, for now, go ahead and use Skype, but treat it as a landline phone and expect your calls to be able to be um, read over the wire or, or listened to over the wire. Uh, the, uh, as far as chat goes, um, chat is the same way, especially Facebook chat. Anybody working for Facebook uh, just about can uh, read your emails and your chats. Um, there's a program called Pigeon IM, and that connects to ver uh, a whole lot of different services like um, uh, Yahoo Chat, Google Chat, AOL. Uh, and then a plug-in on top of that is Off the Record OTR. Uh, that will encrypt um, your communication both ways. Again, there's another program where both users have to uh, be using uh, Pigeon and OTR for the encryption and decryption to occur. Okay, before I move on, I'm going to check the channel see if there's any questions. Yes. Uh, okay, all of these programs that I'm mentioning have versions for Windows, um, Macintosh, and Linux. I made sure that the, the programs that I'm recommending today um, are available on all three platforms. Uh, that's important because, for instance, George Donnelly runs on Macintosh, and I run on Linux, and uh, a lot of you got other guys are, uh, I'll, I'll say, still on Windows. <laughs> um, and uh, I want us to all be able to communicate together, uh, and so that's one of the main uh, criteria I set down when I, when I created this uh, uh, presentation today. Okay, there's a troll in the chat room. A key. Why not have a key instead of a password, like an encryption? I guess that's uh, referring to... Um, yes, you can have keys that are not password protected, but you can also have password protected keys. Uh, Moving right along. Okay, um, let's move into the physical realm. Uh, read recently that your laptops are subject to search. That is, like um, the whole disk is subject to search when you cross over the United States border. Uh, that's really scary. Uh, there's really scary Im implications about that, but um, one way around that is to encrypt the whole drive and ship your laptop in advance of your chip trip and then ship it back to the United States. Um, uh, don't, don't travel with, with your devices if at all possible. Uh, you can also have backup or drop devices if you expect that maybe something will be confiscated. Um, use a tri uh, cheap uh, drop device that if it does, you're not going to be um, out uh, some expensive hardware um, like a professional video camera uh, as it's being held for evidence. Um, and uh, if you're ever required um, to turn over something like a camera to law enforcement, if you could remove the memory card first um, and enable the right lock 
Uh, I don't have a memory card. I meant to bring one with me. But on the side of the SSD card that goes in your phone or your camera, there's a little switch on the side that will lock it. That way, if someone attempts to delete information off of that card, um, the right operation can't uh, perform. Um, and moving forward, uh, correlating with physical security, data secure, uh, data recovery, rather, um, sometimes it's unavoidable. Your camera will be confiscated, and whatever video evidence that you've documented will be um, deleted. Uh, there is a software program. Again, it works on all three platforms. It's called PhotoRec, one word, uh, Photo R E C. It will delete your. Uh, I'm sorry. It will recover your deleted. Uh, uh, videos and photos from your camera. Um, I used this, it worked like a charm when I drove down to Tupelo, Mississippi to help the Motorhome Diaries crew. Um, uh, Pete Air, uh, Jason Talley, and Adam Miller, or Adamo Freeman, um, as he likes to be called, uh, are some uh, great a uh, activists traveling the country. They were abducted in Jones County by law enforcement. Um, the video uh, evidence that they documented during their um, uh, arrest was uh, subsequently deleted while it was in police custody. And um, I, I just ran this simple free tool on the uh, camera and it pulled that video right back up and they were able to present that to the, um, to the world uh, and uh, it made it very obvious who was telling the truth in that situation. Let's see. Um, another, uh, one of the things that you can do while you're waiting to recover it uh, is, you know, you know, anytime you turn the uh, camera on, you know, you have a, it usually defaults to the picture taking mode, and if you take a picture at that point, then it'll overwrite the deleted data. Um, so if you can, if, it, if your device has removable media, remove it, enable the right lock on it. Um, you can also remove the battery from it. If you could definitely um, remove the battery, then the device can't be powered on and uh, then, the, um, uh, then the information can't be deleted. Chances are they aren't going to have a similar battery, um, whoever has custody of the phone. Uh, and also, um, if you're trying to recover from removable media, uh, make sure that right lock is enabled before you t attempt to do any data recovery. That way, if there's any mistakes made, you don't accidentally overwrite the data um, and it become uh, unrecoverable or unusable. Um, so I've talked for about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes now. That's how much I plan to. If you have any questions for me on the forum, I will try to direct you to the right place. I will also get my presentation up so you, you have the links to the software that I've recommended today. Um, this is not uh, something that you just like listen to. Um, security is something that you have to always think about before you leave the house um, while you're creating an account. Um, uh, as you need to change your password, uh, uh, it's something always on your mind because you're not really going to need these security measures until it's uh, too late, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, let's see if there's any questions in the forum. And I see none, and I wish I, I ca had something set up where uh, I could hear you guys. Well, if there are no questions, I thank you for joining me today, and I will get back to work here. Back up everything. Drew Freeman says back up everything. Oh, heck yes. 
Um, I talked about that a little bit with the drop devices. Um, if you can secure deletion of the data, that's one of those things that it really depends on the operating system. Um, I believe the command for Linux is SRM. Yes, it's a program called Secure Delete for Linux. Did I cover proxy services? No, I haven't. Um, I don't generally like to trust um, third parties to handle my security for me. I like to run the, my software on my own system. One of the, um, oh, you know what? I completely. I'll talk about a little bit about re web browsing, and I must have skipped a slide. Um, everybody's tracking you online. Uh, proxy services are fantastic, but again, I don't like to um, uh, trust uh, third parties to handle my security. Instead, I would rather um, uh, run the Onion Router uh, that's Tor. There, the Tor browser is available in a package for, again, for all three operating systems. Um, and uh, this will... Uh, what it does is it creates a chain of hops um, and uh, so that the destination websites you're viewing never sees actually who's viewing that website um, and through those hops uh, it's, it's an encrypted form of communication. Um, the other uh, th uh, thing is the uh, enabling HTTPS um, that's uh, uh, for your browser. You can do that with uh, EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation's uh, HTTP, HTTPS Everywhere extension. Um, you can also go to your uh, major social media sites like Google, Twitter, Facebook, and go to your uh, user preferences and enable HTTPS um, full time so that you're browsing, um, when you're browsing your personal accounts, you can. Uh, nobody can see that information over the wire. I'm going to type a few uh, links in here. Now, uh, another website I want you to go to is uh, EFF.org. That's the Electronic Frontier Foundation and click on their uh, Surveillance Self-Defense Project. Their Surveillance Self-Defense Project will actually um, take you through steps to make sure that you're using good security practices on your um, personal uh, devices.
Okay, Virgil in the chat says, uh, warning about HTTPS, some certificate authorities do have the ability to issue fake certificates to government agencies to be used for spoofing traffic. So HTTPS is not all that it appears. You know, that's why I uh, suggest if you're um, viewing any site that's uh, maybe questionable in nature, um, that uh, other people might not want you to, you might not want other people track you viewing. Um, that you use the onion router in addition to um, uh, HTTPS. Oh, it looks like Mormon.org is a sponsor. How nice. My laptop, Ryan Jones says, my laptop has fingerprint sc scanning hardware. Is that not secure enough? Um, I'm not really sure how uh, that is implemented. I imagine some uh, professional corporate level fingerprint scanners are probably pretty good. Um, I'm not sure at what software version or how accurate it is. Um, of course, with a fingerprint scanner, anybody that had your fingerprint could be able to duplicate that. Maybe that's paranoid, but Kurt Cobain says just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they aren't out to get you. Am I addressing two-year-old users? No, but I have a two-year-old at home, and so I'm sorry if I talk down to people on baby talk a whole lot. <laughs> oh, hey, Pete, Pete Air decided to join us. Appreciate Appreciate you, uh, Pete. I told your story earlier um, about Tupelo, Mississippi, and the Starbucks recovering that Jones County video. Uh, we had a blast. We'll have to do that again real soon under better circumstances. <laughs> I'm going to upload that presentation again. I'm going to correct the links on it and so you guys have information. All right, shout out to Keen Activist Center. I can shout out because this is my show. All right, well, uh, I guess that's it for the main presentation Q&A. I guess we can hang out in the chat for a while and discuss it. I'll pull up some of those links um, and uh, update that presentation. 40 viewers. Fantastic. Thanks, thanks everyone for joining me today. Again, my name is William Pearson um, and I really enjoyed uh, putting on the seminar for Agra.O. Thanks to George Donnelly for putting this together um, in just a few months. Wow, that is a lot of hard work. Very impressive, George. I really appreciate it. Is Tor really secure? That is a good question <laughs> for uh, probably a person with a lot a lot more security experience than I do. As far as I know, Tor um, creates different hops um, for your outbound communication. So let's say I want to go to um, www.freestateproject.org. Uh, it would um, then send that request to several different onion routers uh, between, I believe, two and eight in an encrypted format. So the exit node would send the request to um, freestateproject.org, and the freestateproject.org would see the uh, originating IP address as the exit node. So then it responds, and then it comes back through the hops, or different hops, I'm not sure which. Um, and so the theory being that it is um, 
uh, you can't sniff it over the wire and it's uh, also um, it, you can't tell where the uh, where it's originating from but of course if you don't then as well clear your browser history and cookies um, then your web information could be traced from your own computer Yes, Tor is a proxy and it can be used to bypass website filters. Meaning if you're uh, if you can run th Tor from a thumb drive you should be able to connect to maybe a library computer if they allow you to run executables from your thumb drive, um, your work, your school, and then if they have um, uh, filters enabled like um, Squid Guard or Dance Guardian or some other proxies uh, that, that block um, questionable material, um, Tor will let you right through. It's also free, but occasionally it can be extremely slow uh, because it's performing the different hops and you're using the um, generosity of people running exit nodes. You're using their bandwidth for essentially free. They're not being compensated for that, so they might be throttling your speed as a consequence. Thanks to all the questions, uh, Zach, uh, Pete, uh, Virgil, your input, um, Drew, Aiden, I hope I answered your question. I hope I didn't bore Eric to death. Hey, Holly. My wife is gracious enough to join us. What are some ways to use Tor? Well, if you're viewing any subversive sites, um, yes like how to do things that the government wouldn't want you to be doing. Um, if you're operating or doing business in gray market or black market areas, um, if you're uh, uh, don't want your employer to track what you're doing at work, I guess you could do that, but get back to work like I need to do, get back to work. Zach, yes, that's right. Uh, Tor is the um, technology that right now uh, people participating in the Arab uh, revolutions, you can actually, uh, if you have an extra bandwidth, if you have extra time to set it up, you can use um, uh, Tor with a program that makes it really easy to configure Vidalia, Vidalia Sweet Onions. Um, Vidalia will enable you to set up uh, um, a Tor connection on your computer so people that are uh, 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 trying to escape the censorship and oppression of their government will have an outlet, your computer, in order to access for it. Now you don't want to be running an exit node unless you have permission for your ISP. 
um, you can get shut down because people um, do use Tor to u do bad things. I mean, people use guns to do bad things too. We don't um, advocate the, um, uh, you know, we, we all know that prohibition doesn't work. <laughs> um, so, uh, Tor is just a tool, and you can use it for just about anything to spread freedom and liberty or uh, bad things too. And so, uh, ISP. ISPs and um, uh, government agencies frown on you use running uh, nodes, uh, exit nodes. Leave that to um, professionals and security experts. <laughs> the two-year-old says, that's daddy. That's me. Well, guys, this was a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the lens cap back on the camera now. Say hi to all my kiddos who are watching me. Hey, kiddos. I'll hang out and chat if you guys have any more questions. Again, my name is William Pearson. Thanks for joining me today.